I'm Mike McGold from Coltec Energy. Uh, our company has been involved in developing gasification projects since uh, 2000. Uh, in, in 2003, we installed our first system, um, and since then have gone through a, a almost a continual upgrade of, of technologies. Uh, probably the most in the most widely known system that we've installed was uh, in 2007 at Fry Poultry. Uh, if, if anyone has seen Dr. Lehman's video of Promise of Biochar or read his book, uh, that unit is is shown in, in both of those uh, both of those articles. Uh, what you see on the screen is the latest of our of our systems. Uh, this is kind of a generation four. Uh, the first three units or the first three systems were were wood-based biochars. I mean, they were developed uh, uh, gas fires. They were developed to process wood, and we modified them to to handle manures or more difficult fuels. Um, after coming to the conclusion that that biochar was a was an important piece of the economics of, of any project going forward, uh, we set out and and designed a system that was specifically designed to handle manures and some of the more difficult fuels and also produce a consistent quality biochar. Uh, this unit pictured was installed in late 2012 in Ohio. It's on a farm that houses uh, approximately 4,500 cows. And this unit can process approximately 50 tons a day of cow manure. Um, at that facility, they are they're bringing manure and a combination of manure and bedding uh, into a dedicated manure barn uh, between 35 and 50 thousand tons a year. Uh, we are taking that material and drying it in a rotary dryer to produce both animal bedding and produce fuel for the gasifier. And then we are putting uh, cow manure dried to 20 to 25 percent moisture into the system, producing the energy to to operate the dryer, and producing a consistent quality biochar. You know, gasification is a thermal process. It's reacting carbon-based fuels in an oxygen-starved environment. Uh, typically, the syn gas produced in the gasifier is then combusted in a thermal oxidizer. Um, you know, there are there are systems out there that are taking syn gas and firing it directly in a reciprocating engine, but they're operating with um, processed wood. They're operating with a more consistent fuel. Um, manure manure is not a consistent fuel. The, the composition varies, and so the syn gas varies. So it becomes very problematic to try to, to utilize the syn gas directly. Um, we just add add enough air and combust it in a thermal oxidizer and then utilize the heat. The product of gasification is, is heat and biochar, uh, unlike pyrolysis. Pyrolysis, they also produce an oil and, and we do not. We just, we just produce a, a hot air product and, and a solid, uh, solid product in the form of biochar. Our unit is a fixed bed gasifier. Uh, we do not have a fluidized bed. The material sets flat on the, on the floor of the unit. We introduce a controlled amount of air in a controlled uh, zone inside the gasifier to provide the oxygen starved environment. Typically, we are producing mostly carbon monoxide inside the gasifier. And it's when we add air in the, in the thermal oxidizer, then we are converting carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. And inside the gasifier, our temperatures in, in the air inside the gas fire typically range between 1,000 and 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The, the feed rates and the biochar removal rates inside the gas fire are controlled through variable frequency drives. So that allows us to control not only the, the input and so control the throughput of the material, but because the, the feed of the, of the the feed rate of the raw material is independent from the feed of the biochar 
coming out of the machine. So it gives us the ability to control the retention time of the biochar so we can impact the biochar quality as well as in as control the throughput and the energy output. We also have the our air fans are on free, variable frequency drives, so they also uh, can be modulated to uh, vary the throughput and energy output. And you know, the, one of the, the keys to being able to control the amount of air, in, in addition to uh, starving it for oxygen, uh, the, the minimal amount of air inside the gas fire also allows us to control particulate carryover, so it it gives us a cleaner emission stream. Um, biochar is the carbon-rich product obtained when biomass is heated in a, in a closed container, either oxygen-starved or oxygen-free, either gasification or, or pyrolysis. Uh, gasification produces a mineral that uh, a material that contains mineral ash from the feedstock as well as the, the fixed carbon, and which will be in the form of a carbon char. And then this this Carbon is transformed into a very absorbent material that has charged particles, which attracts nutrients and moisture. And the the ability of this carbon uh, changes dramatically with the, the different minerals that are that are as they part of the the biochar itself. Um, biomass materials contain carbon in two forms. It's either in in the form of fixed carbon or volatile matter. And what we do is we react the carbon in the volatile matter, which creates energy, and then try to leave as much of the fixed carbon behind in the biochar. Uh, typically, volatiles start reacting at around 400 degrees, and fixed carbon is usually closer to, to 1400. So it's a, I mean, it's a very temperature-driven process. Due to the high temperatures and retention time, biochar from manures are free from pathogens, E. coli, growth hormones, and residues from medications. So it, you know, it provides an outlet for, for a processed product uh, coming out of manures that, that otherwise farmers don't have, have the outlet for. Typically, wood has between 2 to 5% mineral ash and 20 to 25% fixed carbon. So when you're producing biochar from wood, uh, you're going to have a very high carbon content. Um, if if you retain all the fixed carbon, you're going to be as high as 80 and 90 percent uh, carbon in the biochar. But wood has relatively few nutrients, so you you have little nutrients in the biochar. It is predominantly just carbon. Uh, on the other hand, when we gasify manures, uh, typically the manures will be anywhere between 15 to 30 percent mineral ash, and between 6 to 18 percent fixed carbon. So our biochar will be about a 20 to 25 percent carbon product. But the rest of that, the, the, the mineral ash that's contained in that biochar contains an array of, of beneficial nutrients. It's nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and, and a lot of trace minerals that are, that are beneficial both in soils and in feed. The composition of, of the manure biochar varies with the animal type and diet. And the levels of the various nutrients change, but their benefits do not. Um, for example, poultry biochar will have a high percentage of calcium, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Egg layer biochar will be extremely high in calcium uh, due to the amount of calcium they feed the birds to uh, produce strong eggshells. Cow manure biochar will have a higher level of, of uh, magnesium. And we're doing a lot of work with uh, solid separation systems with both swine and cow manure uh, to try to retain more of those nutrients in the solid fraction. So we're even increasing the level of those nutrients when we're producing biochar from those products. Um, but, but these nutrients all provide different benefits, uh, whether it's in the soil, whether it's uh, heavy metal capture, um, the different nutrients all have different reactions. So there's, they provide different benefits, so they provide different applications for the biochar. 
and for biochars made from specific seed feedstocks based on those nutrients. Um, and it was one of the slides that, that Kurt had earlier. You know, there was mentioned designer biochars. If you are producing biochars from different manures or even manures and wood or agricultural debris, uh, you will have different qualities of biochar just because of the feedstocks. And it allows you to be able to to blend those biochars and, and create the designer biochars for specific needs. Um, the vast majority of biochars, if you read through publications and research, are, have been produced from wood. Um, quite frankly, because wood's a very simple material to, to gasify or pyrolyze. Uh, manures can can present problems. Uh, so most technologies are, are designed for wood. Um, biochar made from other fuels such as manures not only have a value as, as a biochar, but also provide an environmental value as they provide a method of disposing materials that are creating issues. Um, you know, last year, the city of Toledo had green water for four days. Um, you know, the Chesapeake Bay has dead zones. The Gulf of Mexico has dead zones. And, and agriculture is not the only factor, but it, it's a contributing factor to uh, to the algae blooms in, in all those areas. And finding a an outlet for those manures other than land application uh, gives us an opportunity to not only produce biochars, which are beneficial environmentally, but but eliminate some of the disposal issues that are creating environmental problems. Um, you know, biochar has has applications in a, in a wide array of uses, whether it's soil amendments, feed supplements, water filtration, uh, soil remediation, odor, moisture control. I mean, it's it's amazing the, the different characteristics it has and the different benefits it has in, in, in a variety of uses. And then when you, on top of that, if you produce biochar from different feedstocks and end up with a different array of nutrients and different results, then you even increase the range of opportunities and, and effectiveness. In my opinion, in order to make a significant impact in the world, Biochar must be produced in large volumes, and and our belief is producing it in feedstocks such as manures is, is a, has a higher likelihood of, of success um, because those feedstocks exist in large volumes, and typically they're concentrated in 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 specific regions. Um, egg layers are in a certain area and. Dairies are in certain areas, and so they, they have a, a very high concentration of manures in those areas, and so disposal is a, is a bigger and bigger issue every day. Um, but from a project developer's point of view, biochar provides an even different value, and that's economics. You know, waste energy projects have been developed for years, and most of them are in a field somewhere rusting down. Uh, they fail miserably, or they have subsidies to, to allow them to survive uh, because they are developed for the energy component alone. The key to making these projects successful is multiple revenue streams. Uh, just a very few, and, and we've seen a few, but a very few can survive on a single stream. Uh, biochar can provide a significant revenue stream. Um, not always can it carry a project by itself? But as a as one of a one of a multiple of revenue streams, it can make the economic strong enough to make a project profitable. From a technical standpoint, we don't believe developing these projects is is extremely difficult. But raising the funding is, uh, and education and biochar is, is extremely critical because. Having a having the established value for biochar opens up a lot of funding opportunities, and and getting sales, uh, getting sale prices uh, is a is a key component to, to making these projects successful. Uh, typical projects, uh, the unit that was pictured in the first slide, uh, 
I mean, that is our standard operating unit, operating 24-7. It'll process between 15 and 20,000 tons of manure a year um, at an input moisture somewhere between 20 and 30 percent. Uh, poultry, uh, broiler manure, broiler litter, turkey litter, coming out of the barns, they are in that moisture range so they can be directly input into the gas fire. Cow manure and swine manure require some drying, um, either as we're doing in Ohio, just through a rotary dryer, or the, the very high moisture contents require some solid separation prior to drying. Systems handling wet cow manure, we can process 60 to 70,000 tons per year with a single gas fire. So that gives you an idea of, of the, the size of, of those systems. And, and just rough numbers, that equates to a, a, about a 5,000 cow dairy. Um, biochar production with these systems will be between three and 5,000 tons a year. Um, and that depends on the composition of the manure, how, how much ash is in it, and, and how fresh it is. I mean, there's a, several variables, but it will be in that range. Um, and the use for the energy can vary anywhere from using the heat to dry, to heating buildings, to producing steam, producing power, absorption chillers. Uh, I mean, we are producing hot air. And virtually every energy application that's used starts off with a form of hot air. So, I mean, there are readily available equipment that can be bolted on the back end for, for the energy application. Um, and, you know, in our experience, almost every project is unique. Each customer has unique needs and conditions. And But this system is very flexible. And, and when we develop projects, they are tailored to the individual needs of the customer, whether that's on the front end on their needs of getting rid of material or, or processing material, or on the back end for what they can use the energy for, or, or the biochar or additional byproducts such as such as animal bedding. Um, you know, being able to produce a solid product like a biochar versus having a raw manure to handle or or even a digestate has huge environmental and economic benefits. 